Uh, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Lin Xiangye from Nanjing University of Finance and Economics. Uh, this paper is advised by Professor Li Shi and uh, Professor Ding Ding. Uh, uh, minimum wage policy has been uh, more and more emphasized in China. Uh, most of relevant empirical studies focused on the effect of minimum wage policy, but the results are mixed, just uh, as several, uh, several presentations show. Uh, for example, some, exam some studies find uh, significant and negative impacts on employment, while others find no impact. Maybe the reason is that these studies uh, focus uh, different uh, type of workers or different uh, type of firms or different uh, re region. So maybe the effect of minimum wage policy depends on which type of workers or, or firms are examined and uh, what, what type of region of the country is studied. Mm. At, uh, on the other hand, in fact, whether minimum wage policy have in fact also depend on whether firms comply with minimum wage policy. As we know, in most uh, developing countries, the enforcement and uh, uh, compliance of minimum wage policy is not perfect. Uh, in our paper, we use a matched firm and employee data to examine uh, to what degree to which minimum wage policy are compliant with. And we also uh, identify uh, which type of workers in which type of firms are most likely to be affected by minimum wage policy in China. Mm. Uh, relevant uh, literature review. Uh, in China, there have been very few empirical studies ex examine evidence of compliance with minimum wage policy. Mm. Some studies present evidence, but only for a subset of Chinese works or firms. Uh, for example, Xie Yong, uh, 2010, surveyed 485 rural migrants in Jiangsu province, and uh, Sun and Shu, 2011 studied, studied rural migrants in Guangdong, in Guangdong. Uh, Du Yang uh, used data from five capital cities in Shanghai, Wuhan, uh, Shenyang, Fuzhou, and Xi'an. All these uh, studies found that minimum wage policy is complied very well, but uh, most uh, workers especially rural workers, work overtime, but not receive overtime pay. Mm. Uh, du Yang also find out that uh, rural migrants' wage is more likely to be below minimum wage policy than city residents. Uh, Carlin uh, used uh, annual urban household from 2002 and 2009 find that uh, the proportion of workers whose total monthly wage below the minimum wage is 5.6, but they did not consider workers working hours. So uh, in summary, the existing studies suggest that uh, monthly, monthly minimum wage for full-time for full -time work uh, is compliant very well, but uh, firms often violate the regulations regarding pay for overtime. Let me introduce our data. Our data is for the year uh, 2009, and uh, this data was collected in 2010 by Professor Li Shi and the uh, Ministry of Human Resources. Uh, to construct the sample of firms, six uh, provinces from different regions in China were chosen. These provinces are Guangdong, Shandong, Beijing, and Jiangsu. Uh, 
Hubei and uh, Shanxi, uh, six provinces. Uh, then in each province, three to five cities were chosen. Generally, uh, three different kind of cities were chosen. The capital city in China, the capital city in one province, uh, almost uh, very developed. And then one million developed uh, city and one least developed uh, city for each province. Uh, at last, in each city, uh, enterprise were randomly chose. After clean, we have 2,835 enterprises are chosen from six provinces, uh, 39 cities, and 249 counties. Yeah, it should be Shanxi, two A's in Shanxi, <laughs> or the Western Shanxi. Uh, Shanxi. Xi, Xi'an to Shanxi. Is yeah. Should be two A's. Otherwise, it's Taiyuan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Enter, uh, enterprise level variables include ownership, uh, the average number of employees, enterprise size, revenue, profit, total cost, and uh, etc. And. Uh, mm, in every, in every enterprise, uh, all uh, employees are chosen. But uh, because our data is for 2009, it's yearly data, so uh, employees uh, were hired or filed in 2009 are not included in our data. So at last, uh, employee level variables include sex, age, education, attainment, occupation, position, working hours. Uh, our uh, employee, employee level data provide not only total wage, total wage, but also its different uh, components. We have four, uh, four parts of total wage, basic wage, bonus, supplements, and overtime pay. Uh, um, Basic wage is fixed before the workers work, and uh, bonus can differ between different uh, individuals and are based on the productivity of workers. Supplements are given to workers with certain job uh, characteristics, such as those who work in special conditions, for, for example, night hours, or, or who have more years of tenure in the firm. Overall, uh, 65 of the wage paid to the work is uh, basic wage, and 20% uh, uh, of wage are, are attributed to <coughs> bonus, 7.6% from overtime pay, and 6.7% uh, from supplements. Uh, from different samples, uh, from totally uh, least skilled workers uh, receive the small, smallest uh, fraction of their wage as a bonus. These same workers are often likely to receive a larger uh, fraction of their total wage as overtime pay. Uh, then we consider compliance with legal minimum wage in China. Uh, first, we want to examine who earns less than the monthly minimum wage. Uh, as we know, according to uh, Chinese minimum wage regulation, of, of regulation, monthly minimum wage is applied to full-time job. And uh, hourly minimum wage is applied to part-time works. Our data is about phones, so our data is about full-time works. Uh, in comparing wages to minimum wages, the regulation um, makes it clear that the wage includes any bonus but not include overtime pay and the legally mandated supplements. In our data, uh, we cannot di distinguish between supplements that are legally required to be included and those not included. Uh, 
For this reason, we construct two measures of the wage when comparing to the minimum wage. The first is basic, basic wage plus a bonus, and the second is basic wage plus bonus plus supplements, two measures. Subsidy? Yeah. Boutier? Boutier. Yeah. Subsidy is yeah. better. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Mm. So type two, we, can, we calculate percent of workers whose monthly wage is below the monthly legal minimum wage. Uh, totally, the proportion is very low. Uh, basic wage plus bonus is uh, 3.4. And the basic wage plus bonus plus uh, subsidies, subsidies is 2.1. Uh, from uh, sub, uh, uh, from different uh, 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 type of workers, we find uh, low human cavity uh, workers. This proportion is higher. For example, female, uh, junior high school, or um, uh, or below is 5.4, and uh, young workers and uh, no uh, work appearance is quite. Uh, higher. Uh, it is interesting is that from different ownership, uh, from Hong Kong, Taiwan, Michael funded funds, this proportion is quite high, quite high. Uh, and uh, uh, from different uh, font size and uh, different region, we found in Guangdong, in Guangdong, this proportion is quite higher. As we know in Guangdong, uh, Hong Kong and uh, Taiwan uh, funded uh, funds, the proportion is very hi higher. Maybe these two uh, factors is correlated. And uh, uh, from different uh, labor intensive, so uh, labor intensive funds, um, this proportion is quite higher. And uh, we from different uh, sec sectors, uh, So uh, totally uh, compared to other developing countries, we found very few full-time workers on less than the monthly minimum wage in China. As we know, in other uh, developing countries, this proportion uh, most is about 20%. So in other countries, this proportion is quite, uh, developing countries, this proportion is quite, quite high. But in China, this proportion is, quite, is very, uh, low. <coughs> so secondly, we, we want to consider complying with overtime pay regulations. Uh, according to labor law, uh, workers who work more than 40 hours per week should be paid at least 1.5 times their regular, regular hourly wage for overtime hours than they work. Uh, our, our data allows us to separate overtime pay from regular pay. But we do not, do not know overtime hours is at weekend or holidays. But uh, at least we know overtime pay is uh, 1.5 times of their regular, regular hourly wage. <coughs> to examine whether employers are complying with overtime pay regulations, we examine the following statistics. The first is what percent of workers work more than four times. The second is what percent of workers work more than four times but not paid any overtime pay. And, sec uh, and the third is what percent of workers are paid less than 1.5 times the legal minimum wage for overtime hours than they work. Uh, last is what percent of workers are paid less than 1.5 times their regular pay for overtime hours that they work. And uh, this is table three. We find <coughs> workers who work overtime hours, the proportion is very high, 41.3. Uh, and uh, this, in, in these workers, 11.8 uh, workers who worked uh, 
overtime hours but do not get any overtime, overtime pay is 11.8. And uh, uh, workers whose hourly overtime pay is smaller than 1.5 times regular pay, the proportion is 28.7. And the uh, uh, proportion of workers whose hourly overtime pay is smaller than 1.5 times hourly, hourly minimum wage is 17. 17. And uh, for some group of workers, this proportion is more higher. For example, uh, for little education attainment, this proportion is quite higher, more higher. And uh, young workers and uh, no uh, work impurance and, uh, uh, and from different uh, ownership, we find that uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Michael founded for uh, the, the workers who work overtime hours, the proportion is very high. And, uh, and from different, <coughs> from different phone size and from different uh, from revenue per work and uh, from different uh, sector. Uh, it is interesting is uh, these two uh, sector, Apple and uh, texti textile products and ma manufacturing and uh, communication equipment and uh, computer manufacturing, these two uh, sector uh, workers work, work overtime, the proportion is quite high. high. As we know, uh, most uh, th this, these two sectors, uh, firms are more likely to export export and from different uh, uh, region, Guangdong, and uh, the proportion is quite higher, quite higher. Mm. In summary, we find evidence of substantial violations of overtime pay regulations in China. Mm. Uh, in order, as we know, uh, we from different type of phones and a different type of uh, phones, we want to know uh, compliance. Uh, in order to control all factors, we construct binary choice model and uh, you could plan the variables are whether or not workers wage below minimum wage or whether or not overtime pay is below 1.5 times regular pay. And the explaining uh, variables <coughs> include personal characters, form characters, and uh, industry uh, dummies, and the region characteristics. And uh, we used binary uh, linear choice model, not, to not profit or logical model, because uh, binary linear choice model is easy to uh, decomposed. All variables are standard, standardized in here. Uh, at first, we want to know the factors uh, affect whether workers wage below minimum wage. <coughs> Personal character we find uh, uh, female, uh, the, the big factor is uh, affect uh, factor is uh, education attainment. Uh, junior high school or below, uh, this proportion is, way, is very big, uh, the big factors. Uh, this is uh, personal, personal uh, characters. And then we examine uh, phone character and uh, we find only uh, this, only this Variable is uh, very big, a lot of foreign, uh, revenue per work. Maybe uh, labor intensive workers are more likely to, their wage are more likely to below minimum wage. And uh, uh, region characters is minimum wage and uh, GDP uh, per capita and the proportion of export to GDP. I find the 
for regional characters, the big factors is a proportion of, of export to GDP, and then is GDP per capita, and then minimum wage. Uh, this is for uh, compliance with minimum wage, uh, monthly minimum wage, and then we, we want to say uh, hourly minimum wage overtime pay regulation if for uncompliant. I find we find that for personal characters, the, the same as, as before uh, is education attainment. Uh, junior high school or below, this uh, it is a big, big factor, big factor. And then for, then for, uh, for for character risks is is a foreign size, foreign size, and uh, large for is not significant, mm, but uh, it is negative because in our data. They are very, the proportion of large phones is very low, is very, low very low. But uh, we find uh, from science that large and medium phones, uh, their, their work, uh, workers' uh, wage uh, below minimum wage policy, uh, minimum wage, is, uh, the proportion is lower than small uh, phone size. And uh, uh, very interested is, uh, for regional characteristics, we find minimum wage is not significant. Uh, our minimum wage, uh, minimum wage is from county level, county level. So we find uh, minimum wage policy have no significant uh, effect for overtime pay uh, regulations. So maybe uh, in China, Overtime work is uh, widespread, but it is not because minimum wage policy. So uh, for our data, we didn't find evidence that minimum wa wage policy, uh, minimum wage increase workers working hours. So we do another uh, regression. Wait, wait, wait. So it didn't increase working hours or it didn't increase uncompensated working hours? Sorry? You said it didn't increase working hours or it didn't increase working hours for which you don't get overtime pay? Mm, it, at the first, this, this two is overtime pay. Okay. And then the last two column is uh, working, working hours and whether or not work overtime. And uh, uh, for these for this four uh, uh, equations, do, do not, uh, it's not significant. So uh, maybe, uh, in my opinion, is in, in China, work, uh, workers work overtime is widespread, but uh, it is not minimum wage policy. And this is uh, overtime regulation. And uh, uh, then we want to examine who is more likely to be affected by minimum wage. Uh, I think the first, the following two type of workers are more likely to be affected by minimum wage policy. The first, uh, workers whose wage just equal minimum wage are more, like, more likely to be affected by minimum wage wages. And the second, as we know, uh, the average increase in minimum wage is around 10%. So looking at workers earning between minimum wage and uh, 110 percent of the minimum wage is, uh, is an estimate of workers likely to be affected by minimum wage changes. Mm, table, table four is about uh, proportion of workers whose wage equals the minimum wage plus 10 percent. Uh, it is interesting we find so many workers, their basic wage is equal minimum wage. Here is, uh, is 4 and uh, 4.9. And uh, the proportion of workers whose wage uh, between minimum wage to 1.1 times minimum wage is uh, 9.3. But even for low wage uh, workers, they uh, get 
they also get uh, bonus and uh, uh, supplements. When we consider bonus, this proportion uh, decreases greatly. So uh, workers whose basic wage plus bonus equal minimum wage is uh, decreased to 1.3. And then we consider supplements, this proportion uh, decreased to 0 0.8. And uh, so at first, we find so many workers whose basic wage equal a minimum wage. For some type of workers, this proportion is uh, even higher. For example, uh, female and uh, junior high school or below, or young workers and, uh, and workers with little experience and uh, Work, many workers with no skill uh, certificate, this proportion is more higher. And uh, for different uh, font size, and uh, uh, from different region, we find in Beijing and Jiangsu, this, this proportion is very higher than uh, other provinces. And, uh, uh, here is uh, from different sect uh, industrial sectors, and these two sectors, they are the proportion of export is very high. We find these two sectors, this proportion is uh, even big, even big. Mm. So, so we f we at first we find maybe uh, minimum wage have great effect on basic wage. Um, but uh, for, uh, the funds will uh, make full use of bonus to adjust the wages. So at first we find this. And then we look at, uh, uh, at uh, kernel density graph. This is basic wage uh, density graph. We find at uh, zero, zero means basic wage equal minimum wage. And the, here it is, does exist uh, a spike. Uh, below minimum wage, there is a sensory. So this is uh, basic wage. And then we want to consider a bonus. When we consider bonus, this regularity is not obvious than uh, basic wage. Then we consider uh, basic wage plus bonus and plus supplements. This uh, here, there is no obvious spikes. Spike, so in order to further ex explore the re uh, relationship between different components of the wage and the minimum wage, we regress different components of the wage on the level of the minimum wage. Uh, here is wage regulations. Uh, this is for all uh, data, for all data. Uh, dependent variable is monthly wage. And uh, we find uh, minimum wage has great effect on basic wage. Uh, at the same time, minimum wage has also big effect on bonus, but the sign is different. And uh, here is, uh, positive and then for bonus is uh, negative. So we, when we consider uh, bonus and basic wage, then uh, minimum wage has no effect on basic wage plus bonus and uh, uh, plus uh, supplements. When uh, in we do many regulations, we find minimum wage has a great effect on basic wage when we consider bonus, then the total wage is not significant. So this is for all samples, for uh, four samples, four samples. So we find that there is uh, a, sig okay. a significant uh, positive, uh, positive correlation between the minimum wage and the basic wage. However, we find 
uh, second, as, uh, significant negative correlation between minimum wage and bonus. So for most workers, the higher basic wage and the lower bonus cancel each other out. So they found out that higher minimum wage are not significant correlate with total wage. Mm. Our evidence suggests that when minimum wage increase for adjust the basic wage upward, but reduce bonus so that the total wage paid to workers do not change. While we find the total wage are not correlated with minimum wage for workers in general, it is possible that there are correlation for some subsets of workers. So, he, so the following is a different subset. subset. We find the uh, regularity is quite similar. For example, for, for a different gender, male and female, and uh, minimum wage has has a great effect on basic wage, but a negative effect on bonus. When we consider these two parts together, then there is no effect. And uh, for a different uh, education attainment, the, uh, the regularity is quite similar, quite similar. But there is one exception we find for uh, quite labor intensive funds, uh, the minimum wage has a great effect on, on basic wage and uh, for uh, basic wage plus uh, bonus. So for all uh, subgroups of workers, we find that higher minimum wage are positive correlate with uh, basic wage, but a negative correlate with bonus. This However, for workers in most labor-intensive firms, higher minimum wage are significantly correlated with higher total wages. So uh, at last, we want to consider to examine who is more likely to be affected by minimum wage. Uh, the, the, the method is, uh, uh, is the same as before. Explained variables are whether or not workers' wage are between minimum wage and uh, 110% of minimum wage. Because planning variables include personal characters, form characters, industrial, uh, dummies, region characters. And this is a table. table. We find uh, female, female workers are more likely to be affected. And then age is not significant. And experience is important. Uh, workers with more experience, their wage mm, more likely not affected by minimum wage. And then for, uh, the, for personal uh, characters, it is important for education attainment. Uh, junior high school or below this uh, coefficient is very higher. And then for position in form, it's not significant. And the form for for, for different ownership and, uh, and, then, and then as before, for labor intensive funds are more likely are more likely uh, affected by minimum wage. And uh, this is regional characters. We find that the most important is uh, minimum wage, uh, the proportion of export to GDP. So then minimum wage. So at the last conclusions. So this is part of we we needed to to say. So thank you. Employment regressions are sort of the reduced form version of an IV regression where you are regressing employment on wages and the instrument for wages with uh, minimum with a minimum wage, then what this paper in essence is getting at is trying to see whether to establish whether there is a significant first stage, whether minimum wages even affect wages, whether whether there's compliance, and compliance is especially important in developing countries where institutions tend to be weak. So this paper uses a very uh, impressive data set. They collect something like three you know data from three thousand firms across a, a wide geographical location, um, and in total they. 
they survey over 520,000 um, um, employees. Um, so, so, so before before talking with the the speaker today, I thought that these were self-reported wage data, but it turns out that they're uh, they're, they're reported by the firm to the researchers, so, so not necessarily self-reported wage data. Uh, but these data are also representative. They match up quite well with the manufacturing census in terms of the demographics of the respondents and the firm characteristics. So the, the really striking result to me is that the minimum wage is not correlated with the actual wage. Okay, so, so and, and they look at this for um, many different cuts of the data. Um, males versus females, by educational attainment, by age. Um, there's almost no cut of the data that gives us a significant positive correlation. And a lot of the uh, estimates are actually negative. Okay, so we only have one significant positive correlation just for the most labor intensive firms. Okay, so, so what does this tell us? So the, the authors don't come out and say this, but to me, the implications are quite clear. Um, minimum wages in China seem to have a negligible effect on the actual wage. Uh, and therefore, it's unlikely that they can have any sort of employment effect. They're not even moving the wage in any way. And at the very least, I think it calls for more research to investigate whether there is a wage effect of the minimum wage before we investigate whether there are employment effects and other, other, other effects. And other uh, contributions um, of the paper, um, they find that basically firms are adjusting the basic pay according to the minimum wage, but then they compensate for it by lowering the bonus, okay? So that the total pay uh, isn't changing. So I guess one lesson for researchers working on labor in China is that you know the basic wage is pretty much meaningless. What we really want to look at is the total wage that people are being paid. And it's the total wage that uh, falls under the minimum wage regulations, right? It's the total wage that should be above the minimum wage. So looking at the basic wage uh, would be meaningless. Um, and they find that firms violate overtime pay regulations quite often, and this affects uh, over 40% of the sample. So my takeaway from that is uh, if we're going to look at studies that use hourly pay versus studies using monthly pay, that can, you know, we can have very different pictures because, because of this uh, overtime pay issue. So here are my um, comments. So I guess my biggest critique is uh, with the definition of compliance <laughs> that, that they use. So the way I think about compli compliance is that you know, in the universe of the firms, we have those that are going to be affected and those that are not affected by the minimum wage, uh, depending on what their wage already is right, before the regulations, depending on the market wage that they already face. And then of the affected firms, we uh, could have firms that are compliant and firms that are non-compliant. But it seems that in the paper, the, uh, the way that compliance is defined includes all the unaffected firms as well. And so they go on to conclude that we find evidence that there's broad compliance with minimum wages um, in China. And so you know, if we were to take that definition of compliance, we can say that even Jack Ma's pay is you know, compliant with um, minimum wage regulation. Jack Ma is the CEO of Alibaba, for those of you who don't know. Um, so if instead we are going to think about compliance as a, a percentage of the, the uh, firms that are uh, affected, then I mean, ideally what we would have would be we would have panel data. Uh, and we would look at changes in the minimum wage and how firms are responding to changes in the minimum wage. Uh, we don't, it doesn't seem like we have that here. Um, but we do have this very nice figure, okay? And this figure uh, is uh, showing us the difference in the, the a measure of the total wage uh, between the me a measure of the total wage and the minimum wage for the sample. And as the speaker pointed out, we find um, uh, no censoring, no bunching of the distribution at zero. And this suggests to me very low compliance. <laughs> um, if, if anything, it, does, it doesn't appear that firms are uh, complying with the minimum wage. It doesn't appear that the minimum wage is moving firms to 
to zero. Um, now, you know, you can say that. Um, um, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if, if the, you know, what, what the distribution should, should look like, but, but by, the, by the author's own uh, analysis, they, they say that there's no censoring here. Um, so, 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 you know, it seems like there's, there's uh, not much compliance. If anything, there's, you know, very little uh, compliance. Um, so, you know, maybe we don't care so much about this group. You know, we, we really care about all the people that are getting paid above the minimum wage. But, but I think since we, you know, this, this paper uh, has compliance in the title, I think, I think, I think we are interested in this. So, so if we want to better understand the determinants of compliance with the minimum wage, um, I have uh, just some suggestions. So one is that maybe we can just, you know, and this is in order of onerousness to actually carry out. Um, so maybe the easiest thing to do, just zoom in on those potentially affected individuals. So just the people at this uh, left tail up to maybe 10 to 20% above the minimum wage um, and, and look for different cuts of the data, whether, uh, whether there is bunching, whether it seems like they're complying, right? And for example, are larger firms more likely to be compliant? Maybe larger firms are um, maybe it'd be easier to detect violations, uh, minimum wage violations for larger, more established firms. You know, do we see that? And, you know, does it seem to make sense with our priors? Um, another thing maybe you can do, um, since you do have a firm survey, I don't know if you ask the firms to do this, but maybe you can just ask them to report on whether they um, adjusted their wages after there were changes in the regulations. You know, just ask the firm managers about that. Um, and then, and then I guess the, the last one is um, the least feasible logistically, uh, but but it'd be great if you collect another round of data. Um, I, I guess this data was collected in 2010, 2009, 2010. So it's been four years, and the minimum wage has to change at least every ten years in China, uh, every two years in China. So so there there have been changes since then. And so if we could go back and collect another round of data, maybe we can identify these effects. Uh, more directly, you know, what what are uh, what what does compliance look like, um, and it doesn't. It maybe is less challenging than than it seems. I mean, you you already can identify those who are uh, potentially affected, right? You, you you already know who are the people in the left tail, and you can potentially only follow up on those people, or or you know, randomly survey a, a proportion of those people. Um, Okay, and, and, and if you do that, you can also even look at uh, employment effects uh, as well. And, and I, I thought that this, uh, this data set used use self-reported data rather than firm-reported data, so I thought that maybe it would be uh, a contribution in that it would be more credible than firm-reported wages um, in the manufacturing census, but, but maybe that's not the case. Um, okay, so then my... my uh, Next point about comparisons of self-reported wages to firm-reported wages may, may not be feasible to do because that's not the case. But I think, I think this data set is poised nicely, poised nicely to help us clarify some of these data issues in the literature. Um, for example, uh, how does it compare in terms of just the basic descriptive statistics uh, with, the, the, with Carl's paper, right? And because Carl does find significant um, disemployment effects, whereas this paper suggests that we wouldn't find any effects at all. So how, how does it compare uh, in, these, in these basic statistics? Are there differences to begin with in the samples that we're working with? Um, just something to, um, to think about. Um, and then lastly, I just have a few um, um, sort of questions, suggestions. So, so one is about the survey procedures. So um, I'm, I'm curious, the, the authors want uh, very very clear about this. Um, curious to know, you know, how how did the firms decide which employees you'd be able to survey? Were the managers looking over their shoulders when they filled out the questionnaires? Um, how how were how were the firms selected from from this list? It just said that it was randomly selected. Uh, what is the list of firms that that you selected from? Um, given that in the literature uh, in the U.S., for example, um, there have been a lot of critiques of studies where people collect their own surveys. You know, there have been doubts about the quality of, of these 
uh, data sets, like telephone surveys, for example, um, I think it would be it would be useful to be more explicit about the, the survey procedures. Uh, okay, and then and then lastly, I'm, I'm, I think uh, others have, have mentioned this today already. But what what are the incentives for compliance in China? I'd like to know more about this. Um, maybe you know maybe there's spotty enforcement, and and that that heterogeneity in enforcement is driving compliance. Um, uh, so if you can get data on um, maybe probability of being uh, inspected, a history of violations, et cetera, you may be able to test something like the uh, Ashenfelter-Smith compliance model. Um, okay, and that's it. Thank you.